when a gentle girl can win prayer from out the lips of sin when a child gives up tears and the barren almond bears when the silent chapel bell sounds the ghostly sinner's knell then shall all the house be still and peace shall come to canterville I guess you guys are just starting back to school after your summer vacation. And here I am in unjolly old England, cooped up with my mom and brothers on my way to some place nobody ever heard of. My dad came over early to start his research at the university. Mom says the grant he got is some big deal, the kind of thing that physicists get all excited about. But I don't see why he had to drag all of us along. Ginny, don't look so grim. You know, Living in another country can give you a whole new perspective. If I don't die of boredom first. Canterville next station. Next stop, Canterville. Washington, wake up. We're here. Oh, I can see Dad. Sorry about this crazy weather. You know, we get four seasons in a day here, but this will blow over quickly. Hi. Uh, guys, how was the trip? The plane was bumpy and Washington threw up in one of those little bags. Adam, spare the details. And how about London? We went to Madame Tussauds. And had this scary part with Jack the Ripper and everybody. We saw Hamlet in the West End. Guys, this is Mr. Umney. Mr. and Mrs. Umney will be taking care of us. My family, my wife Lucille, right. my daughter Virginia, and these are my sons, Washington and Adam. Hi, Mr. Hi. Rummy. Help Mr. Rummy with the baggage, guys. Honey, they have people working for us? You haven't seen anything yet. Come on. Ginny, you're gonna love this place. I can hardly wait. Come on, boys, climb in the back here.
Welcome to Canterville Hall, home for the next four months. What do you think, Jenny? It's old. I present Mrs. Omni. I bid you welcome to Canterville Hall, sir, madam. I... I'll look. see to the luggage. And to the young mistress. Welcome. The mistress? Jenny's mistress? What are we? You are the young masters. Masters? We're masters? Look out! Excuse me. Boy! Some place, huh? Yeah. Ow, guys, guys, cut it out. Ow. Give me my guys, get over here. After you've had a chance to get settled, we'll be serving an early supper. These are the lords of Canterville Hall. That's Lord Henry. You'll meet him tomorrow when he comes down to sign the lease. Look, Hiram. Hi, I don't see how we can afford this. And the servants? Well, it's dirt cheap. These aristocratic families are all going broke and they have to rent these places out. And then there's the silly stories. Stories? What kind of stories? Nothing, really. Just the wind. These old places make a lot of noise. Come on. That was a wonderful meal, Mr. Romney. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll tell Mrs. Omni. Ginny, you hardly ate anything. Oh, it's too cold to eat. Well, there wasn't exactly central heating when this place was built, right, Mr. Omni? Uh, quite right, sir. I'd better go see what those boys are doing. They'll be fine. Let them play. You going to bed so soon, Ginny? Yeah. Maybe I'll get warm there. Good night, honey. Good night. She just needs a little time. I suppose. What's a stupid trick you guys? I could have broken my neck. Those two boys are whirling dervishes. No discipline. Not to worry. They won't last the night. Yes. The old boy was at it with the moaning as soon as they arrived. Starved for attention he is. How long is it since the McKendricks? Nearly two years. I hear the poor woman is still in the institution. Well, good luck to her. That's all I say. What was that? Uh, probably just the Omnis closing up for the night. Cheers. What is it? Maybe it's a ghost.
How did everyone sleep on that first night? Hmm? Something wrong, guys? Didn't you hear it? You heard it too? It thumped on our door. I thought it was you. Well, there may have been some noise in the hall, but I'm sure that was just the Omnis closing up. Isn't that right, Mr. Omni? Closing up? Who quite possibly is it? There you see. Nothing to lose any sleep over. Now, guys, what do you say we check this place out? Come on, I'll give you a $2 tour. Oh. Oh. A new place, okay? You'll get used to it. What choice do I have? The library is my favorite room. Look at all these books! Wow! Look at this! Be careful with that. What a wonderful room. Look, this book contains the whole history of the Canada. Wow! Oh, look, someone must have spilled something here. Looks like blood. Oh, oh gross! Disgusting. Well, maybe you ought to try to get it up. Honey, you know in my uh, carry-on bag I there's know. the... I know. The miracle. Right. I'll go again. Thanks, honey. Lucy. Mm hmm You don't need to clean that. That's why we're paying Mrs. Omni. You know what I'm like. still here. Uh, yes, my lord. Oh, Lord Canterville, those two boys are going to drive me mad, I swear. Now, Mrs. Omni, we shall have to make allowances, things being what they are. Any trouble? Only noises so far, my lord. Well, <laughs> at least they've lasted the first night. <laughs> <laughs> With deference, sir, Lord Canterville. <laughs> hey, there. Gone. <laughs> <gasps> that stain, Mrs. Otis, was the blood of Lady Eleanor de Canterville, who died on that very spot in 1584. It has been the wonder of the county for 400 years, and until today has resisted all efforts at removal. Well, I, I, I didn't know it was so special. Mrs. Umney, uh, uh, are, are you all right? I suppose so. Oh, Mrs. Umney, I'm so sorry. Oh, Barclay, this bodes ill. Mrs. Umney, uh, we don't believe in such things. Uh, you'll see. Uh, I have seen things with my own eyes. I have seen things happen in this house. May Providence watch over you. Um, this is Henry, Lord Canterville. Lord Canterville, my family. My wife, Lucille. How do you do? How do you do? My daughter, Virginia. Oh, Virginia, how do you do? And these two rascals are my sons, Washington and Adam. Pleased to meet you. Um, how did she die? That lady, Eleanor. Did somebody kill her? No one knows. Her husband, my unfortunate ancestor, Simon de Canterville, disappeared mysteriously after her death. His body has never been recovered. Wow! But his spirit has haunted this hall ever since. It was a ghost! Also! All right, guys, that's enough. That's enough. Go outside and play. Okay. Say goodbye to Lord Canterville. Uh, goodbye, Go lads. On. Goodbye. Bye. Lord Canterville, with all due respect, sir, the laws of physics are not going to be repealed even for the British aristocracy. You may think anything you like, Mr. Otis. And you must remember that I, I warned you, hmm? Elise. Thank you. Uh, Hiram, before we sign anything, don't you think we, we consider should ourselves that? warned? We are happy, Lord Canterville, to be leasing the hall, ghost and all, until next June. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Otis, and Mrs. Otis, and uh, Virginia, of course. Ginny, 
We're saying goodbye to Lord Canterville. Oh, bye. Goodbye. You must come to dinner with me one evening. Goodbye, all. We'd be Thank delighted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Found the prophecy, have you? Is that what it is? A prophecy about what? I couldn't say for certain. Is it about the ghost? I don't involve myself in such things. Not like Mrs. Omni. Looks like this storm will last the night. I wonder if he'll come again. Now, Wash, like I've told you, there are no ghosts. But Lord Canterville said... The universe operates on certain fixed principles. Now, I admit we don't understand them all yet. And sometimes we call the things we don't understand supernatural. But eventually, there will be a natural explanation for everything. So, guys, up until then, put your faith in science, not superstition. But we all heard it. I know some of us say that we heard something, Jenny. And I also know that some of us would like nothing more than to turn this family around and go back home. Well, that's not going to happen, OK? So finish your supper and stop scaring your brothers. There are no ghosts. I'm stuck in this grungy old house my dad rented for us. There's nothing to do and nobody for miles around except these two spooky old people who take care of the place. And on top of it, I think the place is haunted. At first I thought it was just my stupid brothers, but now I think maybe something is really going on. Of course, my dad, the brilliant physicist, refuses to believe it could be a ghost and blames it all on me, as usual. Washington, Adam, you guys better cut this out. What are you doing? It's him. Who? What are you talking about? He's right there.
There's no one there. Oh, are you all right? We're fine, Mrs. Omni. It's just a prank that got a little out of hand. Oh, I wouldn't be so sure. Let us not meddle, Mrs. Omni. Come along, my dear. Betty buys. Ginny, I don't want you scaring your little brothers anymore. Now, it was a good joke, but enough is enough. But he was there. Guys, I know you think you saw something, but it was probably just the lightning and your imagination with a lot of help from your sister. How can you say that? Virginia, I know you don't want to be here anymore. Well, I'm sorry. I can't do anything about that. But you are not going to make the rest of our lives miserable. Now, everybody get back to bed. And you guys put that stuff back in the kitchen tomorrow morning. Hi, Rum. Lucy, come on. We're sorry, Jenny. Honest. It's okay, Mom. Let him think what he wants. Maybe the wind blew something over, or, or the lightning cast a shadow. You know, it's a strange place. Your eyes play tricks. Yeah, that must have been it. Come <laughs> Things will be better in the morning. Night, night. Don't let, let the, the bed, bed bugs bite. Right. Some bed bug. Madam. Maybe the rain will help this poor thing. It doesn't show any buds. It's been like that ever since. As long as anyone can remember, madam. So uh, why don't you take it out? Lord Canterville's orders is not to be disturbed. Odd. Mr. Romney, I'm just going into town. I'll uh, get the car for you. Sir. No, no, that's all right. I'll drive myself. No. No, no, no. Uh, that, uh, no trouble at all, sir. Honey, before you go, I'm worried about Ginny. Maybe she really did see something last night. Oh, Lucy. It's just her way of getting back at us for taking her away from her friends. And the worst thing we could possibly do is let her think we could be frightened into going home. No telling what she'd do then. Maybe. But the world is weird noises. What noises? Just the power of suggestion. Don't let her suck you in. Remember, like I say, everything, everything has, has a rational explanation. Yeah, I know. Good. Get her out. Make some friends. Meet the neighbors. She'll be fine. You'll see. I hope you're right. Morning, Miss. Hi. Mrs. Omni. This is Sir Simon, isn't it? Oh, why, yes. Uh, fine figure of that. That look on his face. What do you think he's feeling? Seems pretty fierce. Yeah. Well, there's something else, too. Well, now that you mention it, yes. Maybe a little sad, perhaps. I'm lonely. Yes. Perhaps so. Well, we'll just have to clean it up again. What is it? It's nothing. Would you go get the cleaner? Yes, Mom. We may have to start keeping this room locked up. What? Uh, uh, with a third ferret, and he says... <laughs> what? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. I'm, um, Hiram Otis. My family and I are renting Canterville Hall. Ooh. My, my. 
And I was wondering if you could direct me to the post office, please. Now, I'll be here. I'm the postman. Oh, thank you. And uh, what about the local police station in case of emergency? I'll be here too. I'm the constable when one is needed. As a constable, you're a better postman. <laughs> <laughs> Telephone exchange? Aye. Then what about a doctor? Well, I'm the local vet, if that's any good. <laughs> Thank you. It's all very compact and convenient. I'll be back soon, I'm sure. You can count on it. Seems a nice enough sort, eh? How long do you give up? Well, I've already lasted much longer than most. Well, I've got a fiver that says they're gone in a week at the outside. Make it a tenner. Fiver? Yeah. Put me down for twenty. Twenty! Mind if I look? Suit yourself. It's, it's really very good. No, it's just a sketch. I'm, I'm Francis Stilton. How, how do you do? No, oh, Virginia Otis. We're running Canterville Hall. Yeah, I, I know. I. No? I, I saw you the day you arrived. Oh, I don't remember. Actually, the, the whole district is talking about you. <laughs> really? What do they say? Oh, they just wonder how long you'll be staying here in England. Oh, well, we're just staying till June. You live around here? I, I'm your nearest neighbor, the Cheshire Chase, just on the other side of the Pinewood. Hmm. Are, are you enjoying your visit? Not exactly. Oh, I suppose you miss your friends. Yeah, I do. Your boyfriend especially. Oh, well, I don't exactly have a boyfriend especially. What a pity. I, I mean, um, I'm surprised. That's all a beautiful girl like you. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, how do you like uh, Canterville Hall? Oh, well, let's just say it's it's peculiar. <laughs> you ever been there? You used to go there a lot, mm. years ago, when, when the Cantervilles were still here. I wonder if it's changed much. Oh, well, why don't you come over and see for yourself? I, I'd be delighted. How about tonight? Sure. Ha how about dinner? Seven? Right. Uh, see you then. Okay. I can't believe I did that. I'm fine. How was town? Well, the pub does everything but deliver babies, but though I didn't ask them about that. <sighs> everything okay here? Yeah, it's fine. The boys have been out exploring, and uh, Ginny went out painting. Well, we got some time to ourselves. We can relax a bit. Yeah. Hey, I met a neighbor and invited him to dinner tonight, okay? Sure. That's great. I'll tell Mrs. Omni. Thanks. See? Told you she'd be fine. Yeah, hi. You know that stain on the floor? It was there again this morning. Really? And uh, it smelled a little like oil paint. But it's okay. I got it up again. Well, maybe we better start keeping that door locked at night just in case. Yeah, good idea.
When a gentle girl can win prayer from out the lips of sin. When a child gives up tears and the barren almond bears. When the silent chapel bell sounds the ghostly sinner's knell, then shall all the house be still and peace shall come to Canterville. We're the same. When a gentle girl can win prayer from out the lips of sin, when a child gives up tears and the barren almond bears, when the silent chapel bell sounds the ghostly sinner's knell, then shall all the house be still and peace shall come to Canterville. Good evening, Your Grace. It's been a long time. Too long, Your Grace. Uh, listen to me. I'm, I'm not a duke. Not a duke? Just for this evening. Very good, Your Grace. Uh, sir, madam. Hello. I'm Virginia's mother. Pleased to meet you, Mrs. Otis. I'm Francis Still, and this must be Mr. Otis. Indeed. It's nice to meet you. Very pleased. And to these you. are our two sons, Washington and Adam. Hi. Francis Still. Hello. You too. And, um, I guess you've already met our daughter, Virginia. Hello. Yes, hello. Uh, Madam, dinner will be served almost at once. Your Grace. I'm Lee. He called you your Grace. W well, yes, technically, that's what I am. A lord? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm the fourth Duke of Cheshire. 
Really? Y you don't look that old. Well, you see, my parents died in an accident when I was very young, and I inherited. I'm so sorry. So what do we call you then? Your Grace? Oh, please, uh, just call me Francis. <laughs> or, or whatever you like. Madam, uh, Mrs. Omni informs me that dinner will be served immediately. Thank you. Good. Well, let's not stand on ceremony. Let's sit down and eat. Boys? So, um, uh, Francis, you must know this place pretty well. Well, I, I haven't been here since the Canterville's left, but it hasn't changed at all. You know about the ghosts, too? Adam. Oh, that's all right. No, in fact, I do know about the ghosts. I mean, everyone around here does. Well, we take it with a rather large grain of salt. Except those of us who have seen him. Yeah. Come on, we don't want to bore Francis. <laughs> Not at all, no. In fact, uh, no, I, I've seen him, too. Really? Well, I suppose every place has its superstitions, its mass hallucinations. And the blood stain? You've seen that? Well, years ago, I saw it, yes. Well, it's gone now. It's gone. But no one's ever been able to remove that. Mom cleaned it up with stain remover. It came back once, but we got it this time. Yeah, come on, short. Whoa, guys, guys, guys. Hang on, on a minute, guys. Oh, no, 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 not at all. In fact, I, I'd, I'd like to see it. Good. Come on. We've been keeping this door locked in case anyone wanted to tamper with the stain again. I know the door was locked. Oil pan, all right. And I guess we all know where that came from. What? Not now, Hiram. I don't know how you managed to get in here, young lady. But this is in very poor taste. Dad, uh, let's discuss this later. Francis, I know you have to get home. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, I ought to be getting back. Um, Thank you for a wonderful meal. Your coat. Yes, thank you. Go say goodbye. Bed in ten minutes. Do you think Ginny did it? No way. It was him, all right. Green blood? He's making fun of us. Yeah. Well, he won't get away with it this time. Because I've got an idea. Yeah. What was all that about? Francis, have you really seen the ghost, or were you just saying that to defend me? No, no, I, I, I really saw him. It was about six years ago. We were visiting him, playing croquet on the lawn. Just after sunset, he appeared right there, by that tree, playing nine pins with his own bones. And my aunt fainted dead away. <laughs> Well, the ghost has been doing stuff like that to us, too. But my dad's a big shot scientist who can't bring himself to think it's a ghost, so he blames it all on me. I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks. What are you gonna do? I don't know, but I'm gonna do something. Be careful. I will. Virginia? How about tomorrow? I think I can find the time. And the barren almond bears. Farewell to these Americans. I was beset by two upstart boys, denigrated by a little snip of a girl, and indignity upon indignity, ignored by their parents. Well, I will tonight a special effort make. First, we'll I to the parents' room, there to lay a clammy hand upon the woman's brow while I whisper in her 
that trembling husband's ear the awful secrets of the charnel house. Then to the boys where I will gibber and stab myself thrice in the throat. Then turn I to the girl. For her, I will do such things. What they are yet I know not, but they shall be the terrors of the earth. The bell invites me. Gabriel, thou hast the storm forgot. Blow winds, crack your cheeks. Thanks, my trusty familiar. Now to work. A chance, a grand entrance. A ghost. Another ghost. And such a one. It rose like a colossus. And in its hand, an Ethiop's dagger. And from its eyes, there streamed demonic light. Gabriel, think you we could somehow manage that ourselves? It, it had a most chilling effect. And now, methinks, we might turn this appearance to our advantage. If he would join with us against these Americans, surely as a fellow ghost, he would feel some kinship. Blood is thicker than water, although to us that is not entirely apt. I'll after and appeal to his ghostly honor. There is yet time before dawn. Hail and well met, Sir Ghost. I bid you a hearty welcome to Canterville Hall. I am Sir Simon de Canterville, the resident spectre. But setting all chat aside, wouldst join with me in an alliance, ghost to ghost, your heads. Yet crow again and cry havoc. Murder shall walk abroad. Yet crow again and cry havoc. Perdition take the naughty fowl. I have seen the day when with my good strong spear I'd have made him call for me and twirl in death. Take thou this! Been us. Come on, let's see what a big brave ghost can do to a girl and two little boys, I dare you. Why must I be afflicted by these Americans? What on earth is going on? What is this? Are you all right? We're okay. This is the last straw, young lady. What? Somebody could have been hurt. Oh, you could have burned the place down. That's enough. Okay, you win. As soon as I can arrange it, you are going back to Indiana to live with your Aunt Lydia. Dad. 
you're happy now. Mom. Ginny, I think your father's right this time. We didn't mean to do anything wrong, Ginny. We, we were just trying to give him a dose of his own medicine. Well, Sir Simon, I hope you're satisfied. I know a place we can talk. I used to come here when I was little. It's my favorite place. Hmm. It's like I've been here before. What's wrong? My parents are going to send me home. Oh. Why? My brother's got the ghost mad this morning and he really let loose. And my dad thinks I was trying to blow the place up. <laughs> he thinks I've been trying to scare the family into going home, but... But what? <sighs> but now I don't want to leave. I mean, it's weird, because at first I hated coming here. But now, um... Now I feel I belong. I feel that too. Maybe there's some way to convince your parents. I mean, maybe they'll see the ghost for themselves. No. Neither of them can see him. I mean, he was standing right in the middle of the hall and my dad walked straight through him. You know, they say they're not to see ghosts. You have to believe in them. But everyone around here can see him without any trouble. Oh, we grew up with ghosts. I mean, our history is full of them. <laughs> so it's a catch-22, then. My parents don't believe because they can't see him, and they can't see him because they don't believe. I'm afraid so. But if they did believe, then they could see him. That's it. <laughs> Wish me luck, Francis. Virginia. You. No, you have no right here. And you have no right to ruin my life. What? All that moaning and rattling and thumping, my dad blames me for all that. And you've used an awful lot of my good oil paints for that dumb blood stain of yours, and of course he blames me for that too, and that blast this morning, scaring my brothers half to death, that really tore it. And now, just when I meet someone I really like and I want to stay, my dad is sending me home. And he's sending me home on account of you. But I knew not. I must rattle my chains and groan through keyholes and walk abroad at night. I have no choice. Why not? That concerns you not. It does when you're ruining my life, Sir Simon. You have to help me. You have to make him believe. What? He doesn't believe in ghosts. Doesn't believe. <gasps> he has ignored me quite. In four centuries of haunting, I have never been treated so. Your father did, without a care, amble through my person. Well, that's because he couldn't see you. Francis says that because he doesn't believe in you, he can't see you. Gabriel, that would explain it. I was afraid that I was losing my powers. Oh, no, I thought you were wonderful. It's her? Yes. 
I don't usually scream. I mean, roller coasters and scary movies, not a peep. But when you came in that first time, well, you heard me. A most gratifying scream. Anyways, if we can make him see you, then he'll have to believe. Zones. Bring a disbeliever to believe. A cynic into faith. That would test my mettle. But how? I know just the thing. I'll introduce you to him as a ghost he already believes in. Then he'll see you without any trouble. Is there such a ghost? Yes. We saw a performance of Hamlet once in London, and everybody loved the ghost of Hamlet's father. Partly because he came in early while everyone was still awake, but you'd be great in that part. Thou speaks wiser than thou knowest. I gave Will my thoughts on that role when he did visit here in 1599. You knew Shakespeare? I did. And save for my familiar Gabriel, his words have been my only companions for 400 years. Thou knowest how Hamlet's father must be confined by day and walk abroad at night. Where dost thou think Will Shakespeare got us that? From you? In me, you see, the genius, the original. You might almost say the part was writ for me. I knew you'd be terrific. <laughs> You must play Prince Hamlet. We will perform it in the banqueting hall. Gabriel will provide the stage effects. And you must wear a cloak. Just my size. For myself. My armor will well suit, which last I wore before the Virgin Queen at Kenilworth. Until tomorrow night. Oh, Gabriel. I scarcely dare to think it. Might it be she at last? It is too much to hope. And yet she is a lass unparalleled. And then Hamlet says, oh my, what? Prophetic soul. Oh my prophetic soul. OK, good, I think I've got it. <laughs> I hope this works. Yeah, you and me both. What's that over there? It's the old chapel. It's one of the required sites of the district. Would you like to see it? Sure. This is the Canterville family plot. It goes all the way back through the centuries. Are Sir Simon and Lady Eleanor here? No, I, I don't know if anyone knows where they are. Oh, when I was little, I used to climb right to the top of the bell tower. The bell's cracked, so it doesn't ring, but... The silent chapel bell. Sorry? It's a blue moon. Blue? Second full moon of the month. It's supposed to make people fall in love. Let's look inside. This is wonderful. It's like time stands still here. Sooner or later, I'll be going home to Indiana. But nothing could come between us. Not if we're really meant for each other. You seem so sure. I am. I think. Well, I've never felt this way before, Miss. Hard to be 
you sure? Right? And what if we're wrong? But we must at least give it a chance. Don't you feel that? I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I see. So sorry. Why do you season this your love with so much salt water? Oh, Sir Simon, love. I've never felt this before. I don't know what to do. You fear the thrill that seized your heart when you did kiss that boy? It is awfully scary. Love it is, and not to be denied, and it can bring you joy untold. But if we are weak, if we succumb to fear or green-eyed jealousy, then it can wreak a terrible devastation on our soul. I know whereof I speak. But never to have loved. More sad is still to have loved and let it slip away. It's never to have lived at all. In love, and come what sorrow may, it cannot countervail the bliss that one sweet minute gives you in his sight. Come, go you to this boy, and let love guide you. Oh, Sir Simon, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my costumes and things are up there. Are you two ready? Good. Come on, everybody, showtime! Virginia, remember, it's prophetic soul. Prophetic soul. <laughs> cool. Good luck. This way, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Omni, would you please take your seats here? Your grace. Now, the, the performance will take place from the gallery. Now, listen, he's a little nervous. I don't make any rude noises or pull any practical jokes, okay? Promise? Oh, wouldn't dare. Good. Now, remember, at the beginning of the play, Hamlet's father has died, and his uncle has married his mother. Now, in this scene, Hamlet meets the ghost of his father who tells him that he was actually murdered by the uncle. I'll be Hamlet. And we have a special guest star playing the ghost. Hey, we're the little kids at school here. We had a real ghost playing a ghost for us. This is wild. You know, one rarely gets the chance to see Shakespeare performed by somebody actually knew him. I go no further. 
Mark me. I will. My hour is almost come when I, to sulfurous and tormenting flames, must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day, confined to fast in fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. Wow! Double wow! List. List, oh, list, if ever thou didst thy dear father love, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder, most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange and unnatural. Haste me to know it. Know then, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle? Aye, that incestuous, that adulterous beast, won to his lust the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet. What a falling off was there from me, whose love... Whose love was of that dignity. That it went hand in hand even with the vow I made to her in marriage. Sir Simon, what is it? I'm sorry, I, I can't. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Congratulate Miss Virginia on her outstanding performance. She gave me the chills, I can tell you. Yes, I, I, I will. Thank you. If you'll excuse us. Uh, Your Grace, here she comes. That was awesome, Jenny. Yeah, that was cool. It was wonderful. Jenny, really, I don't know what to say. Oh, that's okay, Dad. No, really. I don't know how you and your friend did it, but it was quite an illusion. Hiram, you just oh, saw... Oh, I'll figure it out eventually, but it was a first-rate effect. Of course. I'm just amazed you went to such trouble for a practical joke. Well, it's uh, late. We better turn in. Um, good night, Francis. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm sorry. Your father just seems to refuse to believe. Yeah. I'm more worried about Sir Simon. May I see you tomorrow? Yes. Night. I'm sorry, I, I can't. Forgive me. I don't know why you give her such a hard time. Look, Lucy, I know there's an explanation for all of this. I just haven't figured it out yet. Hi, the explanation is simple. The house is haunted. You really believe that? Yes, I do. Sir Simon is a ghost. And as far as Ginny is concerned, you've acted like a complete idiot. For the past couple of years, you two have been at each other. You used to be so close. I admit I'm having a problem dealing with her, okay? I don't know. 
She used to sit with me. She used to talk to me. And now she's growing up. Most of the time, I have no idea what she's feeling, what she's thinking. Honey, most of the time, she doesn't know herself. She's a teenager. It's tough. I suppose. But there's one thing that hasn't changed, Luz. There are still no ghosts. Oh, you take the cake. Where are you going? I'm going to check on our daughter, see if she's all right. Ginny. Let her sleep. Promise I'll speak to her in the morning. Sir Simon, what's wrong? Why did you stop like that? I've read that speech so often. But just now, the meaning struck me as never before. Oh, Virginia, if I were to tell you the secrets of my prison house, you would hate me as I hate myself. Nothing could make me hate you. You could tell me anything. Would wish to know how I became a ghost. Well, the book said that you were suspected of killing your wife, but I didn't believe it. It's true. It is? For years, our lives were sweet and full. And then the green-eyed monster in my mind did sow his seed, which, like a canker, shriveled up my love. There was a man who I believed a friend a friend, I took for truth what he told me, that like Hamlet's mother, my wife had been unfaithful to me. I fell into a jealous rage. I locked her in the house. I forbade to her all company. I berated her constantly. Her very denials inflamed my madness. I... I drove her to such despair that, at length, I dragged her into madness, too. And one terrible night, there by that fireplace, she took my dagger and she killed herself. And she died in my arms. My tears mingled with her blood. You see, that stain is ours. Oh, Sir Simon. I buried her secretly in a place that she loved best in the world. And I put an angel there to guard. The garden. I've been there, Francis took me. And soon, I learned that she was innocent. My friend had lied. He had wanted her for himself. She loved me. She was loyal. And every, every day, every moment since then, I miss her. And that is why I could not bear to see you lose your love. And how did you die then? I summoned her family here to the house, and I confessed to them my crimes. And I bid them do with me whatever they wished. And her brothers brought me here to this cell. They chained me to the wall. And here I starved, a lingering death. How horrible. I would die a thousand deaths if I could undo what I've done. 
But there was more. They brought a witch who conjured a spell that, like Hamlet's father, I was doomed to walk the night and for the day confined here to brood on my sins. But most of all, remembering her. And when do you sleep? I am forbid to close my eyes. By day I'm here, by night I haunt. It is ordained. I have not slept for over 400 years, and in truth, I'm so very, very tired. Sir Simon, isn't there any place that you can sleep? Oh, yes, that peaceful garden. The angel of death could take me there to lie in the soft brown earth, listening to the silence, forgiving life, at peace beside my Alamo. And can that happen? Yes. Thou canst make it so. How? There is a prophecy. I've read it. But I don't know what it means. I'll show you. Come, here. Here now. Read aloud. When a gentle girl can win prayer from out the lips of sin, when a child gives up her tears, am I a gentle girl? Oh, yes, thou art. And still so young to be called a child. What do I have to do? You have wept for my sins. For I have no tears left. Next, you must pray for me. Because I had no faith in love. And then, if you would go with me into the realm of darkness, there to stand before the angel of death and speak for me, the angel will have mercy on me. Then shall all the house be still, and peace shall come to Canterville, to you. What is it like in the realm of darkness? I tremble even to think of it. There is mist, and fearful shapes do lurk in it, imprisoned in the voiceless winds, blown with restless violence, and evil voices whisper in your ear. But if you hold steadfast to your belief, and show no fear, they cannot hurt you. Against the purity of faith, the powers of darkness cannot prevail. I'm not afraid. I'll go with you and tell the angel that you are a good and kind ghost who gave me the courage to follow my heart. True knight should, I pledge my soul to your safety and happiness forever. On that spot did I forfeit my soul. This is Virginia Otis, praying for this poor old ghost. Sir Simon de Canterville, who is very sorry for what he has done. He can't undo it, but he has spent dozens of lifetimes paying for it. You need to forgive him 
because he can't forgive himself. Please. Show no fear. Hold fast to your faith. I could not bear the weight of two loves lost. I'll be fine. You can only pass through while the clock chimes. Jenny? Pumpkin? It's me. The old man. Look, I know I've been unreasonable about this whole business, and I'm sorry. I'm going to try harder to maybe see things more your way. So, please forgive me for being so insensitive. Jinjin? Has anyone seen Jenny? She's not in her room. She must have gotten up early. No, her bed hasn't been slept in. <gasps> All right, let's spread out the search. Mr. Romney, you know the grounds better than anyone. The grounds? Uh, yes. I'll go with Mr. Romney. All right, I'll search down here with Mrs. Romney. I'll go upstairs. I'll go with you. Let's meet back in the library. Oh, come on, Mr. Romney. Yo, Grace, the emergency. Jenny's missing. Uh, will you search the grounds, Your Grace? I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> You've not touched your food. We're not hungry, Mrs. Umney. Yes, it's the, um, it's the same with us. Please, we're, we're all exhausted. Just leave it till tomorrow. Bless you all, and good night. 
She'll be in our prayers. Well, there's nothing more we can do tonight. Let's turn in and get started again in the morning. Jenny, I thought I'd lost you. Oh, thank heaven it's all over. Oh, Mom. Dad. A secret door! Come on. We have to see about Sir Simon. I thought it was open. Daddy, we have to get in. Lucy, hold this. We have to look after his earthly body. Sir Simon. We'll take care of him now, Gabriel. the ghostly sinners now. And the Baron on Bears. He's been forgiven.
lie in the soft brown earth, listening to silence, to forgive life, to be at peace beside my Eleanor. Well, Lord Canterville, now that Sir Simon has been laid to rest, I suppose your family will want to return to the hall? When you and your family have returned to America, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Though, actually, we have become quite fond of living in London. Why? Have you something in mind? Well, I've spoken to the university about extending my research grant. Oh, Dad, really? And there are some wonderful schools. Course! Lucille tells me that she loves England, so would you consider extending the lease indefinitely? Oh, and, of course, uh, we'd be delighted if the Umneys would consider staying on. Oh, yeah, yes, and we, we'd promise to be good, wouldn't we, Adam? You bet. I'm sure there's nothing that Mrs. Umney would enjoy more. Oh, of course, we would love to. So what do you say? Hmm? Please? I can think of nothing more fitting than you and your family remaining here for as long as you'd like. Oh, oh, yes. oh. oh well, one more thing. My dear girl, you've rendered my unlucky ancestor a very important service. My family and I are much indebted to you for your marvellous courage. Now, this box contains a ring that belongs to the Lady Eleanor. On behalf of the entire Canterville family, I give you our deepest thanks. You're a very extraordinary young lady. bring the two of you back together, as Sir Simon brought Francis and me together. And Lady Eleanor, Sir Simon made me see what life is, and what death is, and that love is stronger than both. That is my home of love. 